Now this is not Adam fucking West with the bang zoot zoots out comic book bullshit. Hello and welcome to Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing the bullshit comic book movie Batman Returns. Batman Returns is the second film starring Michael Keaton as Batman. It's the last one Tim Burton did. He made the first two Batman movies. This one it got real interesting. This is actually my favorite Batman movie of all time. Even more than the Christopher Nolan dark series fucking pushing to the edge of PG-13 bullshit. I like this one because, you know, people, they complained at the time that this was too dark. So that's why they had to go later on because it didn't sell enough toys. And McDonald's Happy Meals so they had to go on, get Joel Schumacher to take over the franchise and then turn it into something else. I don't know what the fuck he wanted to do with it. Tim Burton, he said he didn't really feel like doing another Batman. So what he did was... He took it and he turned it even more into his own little goofy vision. And this is when Tim Burton was good, man. I mean, now he just gets Johnny Depp to put on whiteface bullshit and run around and play some fucking fake character with a high voice. But this is back when Tim Burton, he cared about all aspects of movie making, not just whiteface bullshit. There's good cinematography. There's good acting. You know, he demanded more of the actors back then. He had like a real vision from start to finish of the movie. I mean, I could summarize it, but it's the same as every Batman movie. Batman's around, Bruce Wayne, there's some new villain. This time it's the Penguin, played by Danny DeVito. Oh man, who knew Danny DeVito could be such an evil son of a bitch? And then Michelle Pfeiffer, hottest role she's I, I never even thought Michelle Pfeiffer was hot when I was a kid. I mean, Scarface, she was kind of skinny, had big bulging eyes like a fucking alien. She, you know, flat chest, she was all fucking Ethiopian doubt and shit. But in this movie, she looks good, man. Even when she's playing a little nerd, she looks good. But she's really hot when she plays Catwoman. And that's kind of like the crux. Yeah, Penguin's going eh, 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 with his flipper hands and shit. That's annoying. Batman has to deal with it. But the real internal conflict is that Batman, he's falling in love with this Catwoman. He keeps catching her on the fucking rooftops, beating her ass, whatever. And then in the other world, you know, he's trying to date actually Catwoman in her, you know, her everyday persona. And he and he's like, oh, but he can't, he you know, he can't really get into that relationship because he has to go out and fight fuckers, fight Catwoman. So it's kind of funny because he's dating the same woman twice. He's dating her as a real life persona and as Catwoman. And Christopher Walken, man, he's in it. They've just made up a character, Matt Trek. Matt Trek was the name was the motherfucker who played a vampire, Nosferatu, the old 1930s bullshit. They just took that name, made a whole new character. Walken's got some big ass white wig on, acting all goofy and shit. But hey, man, he's good in it. He's a real villain. In my opinion, he's even more evil than fucking, you know, Catwoman or Penguin or whoever because he's just a normal motherfucker. Ain't nothing bad happened to him, but he's just evil. He just wants to use people, spit them up. So anyway, I know there ain't much review, but there ain't much of a plot other than Catwoman, Batman, the Penguin, Max Shrek, all going back and forth to Gotham City getting ripped up. The thing I like about this is that Tim Burton, he took dark bullshit. I mean, even Batman kills motherfuckers in this. Even Christopher Nolan don't have fucking Batman killing fuckers in his movies. So Batman, he's dropping fuckers off of rooftops. He's dropping down a sewer holes, blowing them up, whatever. So, but it does have, I won't even call it comical, because it's not that I'm fucking laugh out loud funny, but just weird, deranged netherworlds. Like, Gotham City is like another planet in this movie. Not like a fucking fake New York where fuckers are just in the, you know, the back alleys fucking shooting dope and getting beat up by Batman. It's just, it's just a whole nother take on the thing. Really sucks Tim Burton can do a third one. He didn't, you know, I don't think he wanted to do a third one that much. He says on special features, he went to the studio and they're like, nah, man, we got to keep you away. We got to sell toys, motherfucker. We got to keep you away from this shit. You're getting too dark and twisted. So that was the end of the, you know, the real Batman franchise in my opinion. But hey, at least it went out with a good one. As a movie... Comic book zap zoom down down bullshit, half dark, half crazy, half weird, half the minute. I, it, it don't get much better than this, man. I wanted to give this eight and a half out of ten. Picture and sound, this being the spiffy new Blu-ray release, shit looks pretty good, man. The blacks look really black, but still had detail, you know, in the shadows and shit. Really nice transfer for an older movie. A lot of times, older movies look like shit. This one doesn't. It's got the true HD, but hey, Warner Brothers is tricky. Make sure when you put this in. Movie just starts playing. You go in the menu, you see it ain't got the HD sound. Turn on the HD sound, you're enjoying the movie more. So with the picture looking good, the grays are grays, the blacks are blacks, the sound is popping. I'm gonna give this for an older movie. Look real nice. Eight out of ten. Special features, you think this motherfucker couldn't get any better? It just got better, motherfuckers. Anyway. You go on the special features page. I mean, it's like a whole page, especially you got a big screen TV. This shit, they got all these little things you can click on. They got a section where you can click on, 
you know, the, uh, the, the characters and it does a little piece about them. They got this shit called the cat in the bath and penguin. <laughs> it's some TV special bullshit from 1992. I don't know why it's hosted by Robert Urich. He shows you all these clips from the movie. It's kind of like a promo thing that they probably would have showed on TV back then. But it's cool for nostalgia reasons, man. And then they have, you know, a more in-depth documentary about the making of the movie. They have a lot of old interviews from like, you know, early 90s when they made the movie, but you can tell some of the interviews are newer, like Tim Burton, he looks all old and haggard now. Probably all fucking worn out from making them shitty Johnny Depp movies. But anyway, good documentary, tells you a lot, and they're honest because, hey man, this was 20 years ago, they tell you about the problems they had, and Tim Burton, he didn't know what he was doing, he just wanted to go fucking crazy and go all bat shit with this. Also, they even got a commentary track with Tim Burton. You think Tim Burton too, too busy filming two or three Johnny Depp movies at a time, slapping all that white pancake makeup on Johnny Depp. No, nah, he took time out of doing that to come do the commentary, tell you all the stuff he remembered. And the guy's got, it's actually a lot of times you listen to these directors talk about old movies, they don't remember shit. Tim Burton, he remembers a lot, man, because, you know, he, he does all kinds of silly little drawings. He designs a lot of shit. He's a lot more involved than a normal director is, and he tells you a lot of shit. They got an old-ass Suzy and the Banshees music video. Then, like I said, the actual trailer, everything, all this shit. I'll tell you what, this is what a special edition should be. Special features, 10 out of 10. Alright, that's it, man. I know you're getting all excited about fucking Batman Part 3, but it's actually, what, Batman Part 8 or whatever it is coming out later this summer with fucking Bane and, and fucking old Christian Bale getting old, old and crusty and tired of playing Batman. So this is the last one, fuckers, but... Go back, know your history of Batman, see the Tim Burton bullshit, enjoy the fuck out of it, and if you got to, fucking freeze frame that part where Michelle Pfeiffer's whipping the fucking mannequin head up, and you look, and the fucking, the tight ass fucking skin tight leather PVC, whatever the fuck, and you can just see every city, freeze frame that shit, man, because that's, in my opinion, that's really the highlight of the Batman universe, is a woman in a tight black and that's another thing too. You know what? Fuck Underworld. Kate Beckinsale, I'm tired of hearing motherfuckers bragging about fucking. She's in this tight letter. Fuck it. She, she got the idea of the tight letter from Michelle Pfeiffer, alright? Don't get it fucking twisted. If I was Batman, I would fucking kill everybody in this room right now.